we're seeing a lot more adoption. You're going to be hearing in the coming months about a lot of our projects actually being rolled out extensively. I can't say exactly where, but there are cases where um, an open source tool is going to be deployed across an entire national energy grid. I mean, this is, this is big um, to be able to say um, this open source tool is effective and it is safe and it is going to work and it is going to make things so much more efficient um, for the power grid in this particular nation. Hi, this is Yosapin Bhartia. We are here at Open Source Summit in Europe, uh, Bilbao, Spain. And today we have with us once again, Dan Brown, Director of Communications at LF Energy. Dan, it's great to have you back on the show. Always great to see you, Swap. Any major announcements? LF Energy is, um, for those who don't know, you know, we're the open source foundation that is building um, open source systems, uh, software, hardware, standards and specifications to advance the power sector and help us decarbonize faster. Um, so here at uh, the event this week, we actually have five different sessions that we're presenting our members and projects, um, giving an overview of why open source for, uh, for energy at the high level down to specific projects and how they are actually impacting utilities. Um, we've also recently had six new members join. We've released three amazing research reports in the last couple months. Um, one just a couple weeks ago that gives an overview of the entire open source sustainability ecosystem. That's actually the title, the open source sustainability ecosystem. Um, analyzing more than 1,300 different open source projects and uh, public repositories. Uh, that are impacting everything from energy systems and modeling to hydrosphere to forestry to agriculture, um, just about anything sustainability related. Um, there's a lot of uh, um, activity and a lot of passion in this space. Um, and we really think that open source is the, the way to drive it forward. I think one or two months ago, we met in Paris for, for, for the LF Energy Summit there. Uh, talk a bit about any updates to any projects, any new projects. Just, just, just give an update on the project side. Of sure, the absolutely. Um, probably our most recent big new project would be called Power Grid Model. Um, this was originally started by Aliander, which is the distribution system operator. Um, in uh, the nation of the Netherlands. Um, and so this really is a very useful uh, tool for helping power utilities better model what's happening on their power grids, um, which is essential if we don't digitalize these grids um, and all of the operations within um, uh, utilities and grids and substations and control centers and all of that, we're never going to be able to onboard the renewables that are needed. And so um, actually this week we've announced, in addition to that, six of our um, uh, uh, different projects. We have 25 projects total, but six of them have had fairly major new software releases, um, adding all sorts of um, fantastic new um, features such as the ability to better account for the impact of wildfires. Um, for instance, people from California are very familiar with how that can impact um, energy grids. And so by providing the tools to these utilities to better manage that type of risk, um, we're really helping them be more efficient and improve safety um, across the board as well. When we look at Linux Foundation or Linux Foundation projects, uh, the best example, Linux kernel, that Linus created it to solve a specific problem, but now everybody is using it. And uh, when I talk to a lot of different projects, it looks like the scope of the project starts with that small problem that a particular community or company is trying to solve. But when you put in open source, the adoption is wide. So a very good example also, EV charging Everest project as well. So when we look at these projects, do you, of course, this is more or less a, a visionary kind of question is that, do you see that the scope of LF Energy, you always feel that, you know, it will go beyond that niche uh, because these problems, when you talk about, they're much bigger and they are so interconnected that it, uh, do you feel that, you know, some of these projects or the scope of, you know, LF Energy will go beyond the essential idea because uh, you folks, like energy sector, touches almost every aspect without energy. <laughs> uh, without energy, you don't have any technology, right? You know, we need to power all of these devices and servers and whatnot. Yes, exactly. I mean, you mentioned Everest. Um, it's essentially a reference framework and architecture for EV chargers to ensure that they all work together. Um, anyone who has an EV may have experienced the plug fits, but it won't charge, or the app won't take your payment. Um, just because there are so many different systems on the back end, Everest is trying to prevent that. 
Uh, it's being piloted all over the world, um, in North America and Europe and other regions, um, which is fantastic. But the, the reason for LF Energy goes you know, beyond these individual, um, to your point, beyond these individual use cases. And so we don't just want to look at EV charging. We also want to look at that's impact on the grid. And so that ties into some of our other projects. Um, or, for example, the real-time data ingestion platform, um, which started at Shell and was open sourced through LF Energy, um, and Shell has been using for years um, around the world at different types of facilities, um, that can actually be used outside of energy. Really, any use case where you have lots of sensors or lots of devices that are creative, creating massive amounts of data that need to be ingested and analyzed and processed, you need some sort of tool for that, and RTDIP does that. Um, actually, since open sourcing it, we're seeing an average of 20,000 downloads per month of that particular project. Of course, we were at the you know, Paris Summit. Uh, quickly talk a bit about how was the overall you know, experience of the summit gathering some major themes discussions. It had been, for obvious reasons, we hadn't met in person since 2019 with the LF Energy community. Um, we'd been doing virtual summits um, in 20, uh, 2020, 2021, 2022. Um, so finally this year, we, we were re able to gather in person um, in Paris in early June for LF Energy Summit. We had over 150 people um, in person on site from 37 countries, I believe. Um, in addition to more than 100 people uh, virtually um, joining us. And we had around 30 some um, different sessions covering not just LF Energy projects, but the entire open source ecosystem for energy systems. Um, and we find that getting folks together in person, it's they get to learn through these sessions, they get to share what they're doing through these sessions, but also the hallway track is incredibly valuable. Um, I've heard of different projects that hadn't worked together and didn't even quite realize where the overlap was. But just because they were in the same room, they're now actually working uh, on a joint working group um, to try to accelerate things even further, improve um, functionality, um, and make these projects more valuable across the board. Um, I'll also mention that um, you know, in, in full transparency, we make all the videos of all of those sessions available for free. So if you go to lfenergy.org, you can find um, all the videos from that summit, as well as uh, the LF Energy Embedded Summit, which took place um, in late June in Prague. Can you also talk about what are, the, what are the things that are like, I'm not talking exact pipeline, but what are the things we should be excited about when it comes to LF Energy uh, in this year. I'll give a quick shout out to the Everest project again, which I mentioned. Um, they are holding their first summit specific to the project. Uh, that'll be taking place in Germany on October 5th. Uh, more information, of course, is available on our website about that one for anyone interested. That's a free event um, hosted by Pionics, which is the company that um, originated the Everest project. Um, but in terms more broadly of things that I'm excited about to see, um, just we're seeing a lot more adoption. You're going to be hearing in the coming months about a lot of our projects actually being rolled out extensively. I can't say exactly where, but there are cases where um, an open source tool is going to be deployed across an entire national energy grid. I mean, this is, this is big um, to be able to say um, this open source tool is effective and it is safe and it is going to work and it is going to make things so much more efficient um, for the power grid in this particular nation. Um, that's, that's just huge and it's something that we need more of and, and we're going to see more of. Um, I'm, I don't want to say that we're not making progress because we are. We're, we're expanding quickly. We're seeing great deployment and adoption. Um, but it can't go fast enough. We, we, need, um, we need these to speed up even more. We need the development to speed up more and we need the implementation to speed up more um, because we've all seen it recently, the effects of climate change. And, and if we're going to not prevent, but at least mitigate the worst impacts, um, then we, we need to green these energy systems. Can you also talk about, would you also get, you know, because we do also need a lot of education, a lot of awareness about these topics. So is the scope of LF Energy limited to just source code project? No. Or is also about sharing the vision of sustainable, better future, which was also the dream and vision of Shirley Goodman who created this foundation? Yes, of course. Um, no, no, Are we absolutely, there is a big education need. Um, I'll mention um, in June, we released, I hinted at our research reports. Um, in June, we released the, um, our, um, report that looked at the um, 
readiness of power utilities to carry out their digital transformations. And we were thrilled to see that 76% of them not only have plans for digitalization, but have started to implement those plans. The ones that haven't started to implement also have plans. So it's, it's completely accepted at this point in the industry that they must digitalize. Um, but what we're trying to do is educate them on open source. And so that's why we're doing a lot of research. That particular report, the open source sustainability ecosystem that I mentioned, we also did one around the open source opportunity for microgrids. Um, by putting this sort of hard research out, we feel that we can help educate um, the community more. That's in addition to our other activities, thought leadership, speaking at conferences, not just Linux Foundation ones that we put on ourselves, our community has spoken at dozens of conferences all over the world this year, um, really highlighting the impact that open source can have on the energy transition and decarbonization. Dan, thank you so much for taking time out today and give us an update on LF Energy. And I would love to chat with you again soon. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Swap.